Congratulations on getting your opportunity in the NFL just to start off, man. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, I want to ask you, first of all, just I know that the draft has to be a whirlwind of emotions for everybody. Just what was that, that three or four day stretch look like? And how did it come to be that uh, the Chiefs were the right opportunity you felt like were the best to, to start your NFL career? Um, those, I mean, three days was uh, long, you know, uh, just watching it and just, you know, uh, waiting for your name to be called and. You know, um, you know, it, it didn't, you know, work out uh, with my name being called, but, you know, I was glad to get a call from uh, the Chiefs and, you know, able and really excited for this opportunity. Okay, let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hi, Azir. Congratulations. Uh, Brad, I, I just have a quick follow-up, if, if you don't mind. So, uh, first thing, I know you offer a lot of position versatility. How comfortable do you feel going from position to position on, on like, a seamless basis? Uh, I'm, I'm very comfortable. You know, I spent time at guard um, in JUCO. I spent time at right tackle. I spent time at uh, left tackle. So, you know, um, I'm pretty comfortable with, you know, uh, switching, switching inside, going back outside. I'm very comfortable with that. And then doing some research on, on your background, I was able to discover you developed a relationship with Will Shields during the Shrine game and, yeah, and that yeah. preparation. Um, how did that come about? What's your relationship with them, and how did that maybe change after you were drafted here to Kansas City, where he was able to make his name? Um, well, we had uh, he was our um, Hall of Fame coach at the Shrine Game, so you know, uh, working with the O line, you know, he gave us his tips, you know, gave us you know stuff that we can use in our game, and you know, it was like a, it was a blessing, you know, it was an honor just to be around him and have conversations with him. So you know, we kind of started our relationship there and then seen him at the combine and t talked to him for a little bit there. But um, as far as, you know, uh, him being connected, you know, uh, with the sign of the chief, no, it, it was no connection there. I just, you know, uh, he's just a good mentor for me to have. Okay. Let's go to Sam. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, what's up, man. Um, appreciate it. Um, kind of a two part question, but just to build off the first thing you were asked, how exactly did you spend that draft time uh, during the draft? I mean, do you get to a point where you, where you turn it off because you're frustrated with how it's going? Um, and then secondly, I guess not getting drafted, is that something that's, that's going to always be in the back of your mind that you're going to try and use as motivation or are you a guy that just kind of shrugs that off? Um, well, uh, the first question, um, you know, I just kind of spent you know, the days, you know, watching it. And the last day I, uh, you know, had a uh, mom, uh, dad you know just a couple of friends and family you know not a big big group and we watched it that day and you know it, these were times I walked walked away you know just to you know get away and you know uh, be somewhere private you know um, but you know it, it was you know a blessing it was it was good you know good uh, experience for those three days um the second question Wait, what was the, I, I was just wondering if you're the type of guy that, that's going to use this as motivation. I mean, is it always going to be in your head that, that the way this went, or are you just someone that, that kind of just shrugs something like that off? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it'll always be in the back of my head, you know, just knowing that, you know, um, that I didn't get drafted, but at the end of the day, that's the past. And, you know, it all, you know, what matters is now, you know, uh, what I do with it now, no matter drafted first round, you know, undrafted, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just, you know, uh, blessed to be here. Uh, okay, let's go to Mick Schaefer. Go ahead, Mick. What's up, Yusir? Uh, thanks for doing this. Just wondered, you're, um, you're, you're a guy that's kind of bounced all over the place, from Philly and uh, Arizona and out of the middle of the country, Missouri. Is it, you feel like this is kind of something that's paid off? You, 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 your, your, your journey has, has led you to the, the Super Bowl champs and kind of getting a reward here, here being with the Chiefs? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, when I went to uh, you know, went to Missouri, you know, I fell in love with Columbia and fell in love with Missouri as a state. And, you know, I wouldn't rather be nowhere else but in Missouri. Let's go to Herbie. Hey, thanks for taking the time to do this. You mentioned guard, right tackle, left tackle. Two-part question here. What do you think is your natural position? And during your conversations with the Chiefs, how are they projecting you to start off? Uh, my natural position, um, obviously, Tackle, uh, you know, I've played uh, tackle most of my life. But um, second part, you know, um, I have a lot of versatility, you know, uh, comfortable at a lot of spots. And right now, you know, um, you know, we're just working through things and, you know, find out where uh, where I fit better, uh, best at, you know, just trying to help the team however way I can. Let's go to Len Jennings. Uh, go ahead, Len. 
Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, uh, thanks for doing this for us. I just want to uh, ask a question about how much did you have any communication with the chiefs uh, prior to the draft? Did they show any interest? Did you know that they had interest? In, and secondly, um, you know, how much interest did you have after the draft and what made the chiefs so appealing, especially coming off a Super Bowl victory? Um, yeah, I, uh, I've had a WebEx uh, meeting with them, um, with uh, Coach Heck and uh, all the other coaching staff was on there. And, you know, we talked for a bunch. Coach Hill, which is a special team coach, was obviously at Mizzou. So he called me, um, called me once or twice. So I've, I've had a uh, conversation with them before the draft. And, um, you know, just, you know, uh, <laughs> Super Bowl, you know, uh, isn't bad for them to have on their resume. But, uh, you know, just the culture, uh, culture, just the, offensive linemen they have produced with you know me knowing Mitch um him being there uh him used to being there and you know just the uh, culture they develop and you know um I've been a Andy Reid fan since I was young so all right let's go to Matt Derrick go ahead Matt hey yes sir congratulations again on coming to KC uh you mentioned you mentioned Mitch Morse there I'm curious just you know what your relationship with Mitch has been like over the years and has he reached out and told you anything about Kansas City since you signed? Um, no, uh, me and Mitch had uh, a few conversations, uh, really good conversations, but really few. Um, when he came to Mizzou, he came to practices, came to meetings before. But, you know, I always talk to him when he's there. And, you know, he just, you know, gives me, you know, a little wisdom, gives me uh, stuff. So, but uh, no, he haven't reached out yet. All right, let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, thanks for doing this. Um, one question I wanted to ask you, and I don't know if it's been asked uh, yet or not, but the whole idea of, you know, if we weren't in a pandemic, you guys would be on the field uh, getting some reps, understanding, you know, the, the, the normal rookie mini camp that you guys get to have. Uh, now that it's virtual, what have you tried to gather most out of this experience? And how much can you sort of feel like you, you understand what the team is asking of you when they can't obviously be hands on with you? during certain techniques, certain play scripts, understanding sort of, uh, like you said, where you may be fit in the offense. How much has the virtual uh, of this new, you know, experiment been for you? Um, it's been good. You know, um, you know the, the only thing, you know, just asking questions, you know, uh, just asking questions because you're not there. Like you say, you're not there on the field, you know, practicing reps. But, you know, just me being able to ask questions and to, you know, get information, study the play book study the insult you know uh that's always going to be a big part all right bj kissel you want to close us out yeah and uh, popular thing i got a few quick questions here uh yes here uh the first one is you mentioned growing up in philly just how much um did you watch the eagles and andy you said you you knew of andy reed just how much of an eagles fan were you and what do you remember about growing up watching the eagles and, and coach reed's teams um well i've been an eagles fan since i was you know uh since i was younger and you know i remember watching the Super Bowl, they, they lost, but uh, I wanted to watch the Super Bowl, you know, watch, you know, every Eagles game, you know, that I could. And, you know, um, I just, you know, love, I love the Eagles since I was young. I love the, you know, coach that Andy Reid was. And so, you know, that appealed me to sign with the Chiefs. Okay, my other question, and I apologize if this is incorrect information. I read it on the internet, so it has to be true. Um, but I read somewhere that, that your mom, that your mom forced you to play football. Is that true back in high school and in junior college? Did she force you to play football from the beginning? Um, yeah, yeah. You can call – you – I mean, I wouldn't say force, but she had a big part of playing. And, yeah, she had a big part of me playing football. What was her mindset? Like, where was she coming from in that? Uh, just, you know, uh, you know, wanted me to, you know, do something, you know, positive in my life, you know. Uh, wanted me to, you know, make an impact and, you know, to, you know, just not be another, you know, a, a guy in uh, Philly. So, you know, that was the big part. Do you thank her now, looking back? Do you ever tell her? Does she hold that on you? Just like I told you. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes. But, uh, you know, I, I, I thank her, you know. Um, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at without her.